is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Good morning, I'm Lauren Casey. It is Tuesday morning. The time right now is 427. We have some top news to get to before we get into our show today, starting with a crash that, or a shooting rather that happened on the south side of town. Police believe that this was a road rage incident. You're looking at video from yesterday. This all happened in the evening hours at just after 6 p.m. last night when a person driving on I-465 near Harding Street on the south side was killed. They believe the suspect's vehicle was a black model Chevy Impala or Malibu. The victim in this case is from Georgia. We'll continue to keep you updated as we learn more information. Another story that we'll have for you today has to do with the kids going back to school and what schools are doing, what decisions they're making to help keep students, staff and families safe from the COVID-19. So we had IPS had a town hall last night for parents, community members about their plans for bringing kids back back to school this fall semester. We're going to break down what they told parents coming up here on Good Morning Indiana. Plus, we're looking at several other school districts and what their plans are, especially after Washington Township announced yesterday they will be going completely virtual for the start of the school year. We do want to take a turn right now to our forecast. Yesterday, Todd, was a beautiful day here. It wasn't too uncomfortable outside, and today we have one more nice day, right? Yeah, you know, it's going to be a couple degrees warmer with the actual high temperature later on this afternoon, Lauren, at least compared to yesterday. But the humidity today, that is still going to stay pretty low. So that is a good news in the skies this morning. And they are still clear. Temperatures are sitting in the 50s and 60s at 67 in Indianapolis, but 57 currently in Logansport, Kokomo at 59. So a lot of locations there in northern portions of central Indiana back into the 50s uh, this morning with this very, very comfortable air mass that we have in place. Sunny and seasonable once again. 85 is our normal high, so we're only two degrees above that. Later on this afternoon, a couple locations here today could approach that 90 degree mark uh, for your high temperature, uh, but the humidity again is still going to be fairly low throughout the day today, so it won't really feel super, super uncomfortable out there. But things will change as we progress throughout the remainder of the week. Today's the last real good day, uh, I think, in the forecast because the heat, the humidity, and chance of storms all returning in some form over the next couple days. More on that coming up in just a little bit, Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We are also talking to our career coach today as part of our Hiring Hoosier segment about social media, the positives to social media and the pitfalls when you're looking for a job. They'll give you some tips of what to do, what not to do so that your social media account doesn't keep you from getting a job. Maybe, in fact, it'll help you get a job. So we'll have that story, plus news, weather and traffic coming right up here on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. State police are investigating two separate highway shootings in the Indianapolis area, one of them deadly. Now at 430, what investigators say may have led to the shootings. Indianapolis Public Schools shedding more light on its plan to reopen schools in the fall semester. Working for you, we're breaking down everything you and your students need to know. And a new mural honoring Black Lives Matter movement is coming to downtown Indianapolis. This morning, the message the city county council wants to send to the community and how you can get involved. But before we get to our top stories today, I want to thank you for joining us here on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. Todd Clausen is home this morning. And Todd, what can we expect in our Tuesday forecast? It looks like we're going to have one more comfortable day out there. Yeah, you know, a lot of sunshine in the forecast again today, Lauren. That's always good, right? And temperatures uh, that are going to be pretty seasonable in the mid 80s. And best of all, the humidity today still remains fairly low. So this morning, as you get going on this Tuesday, 59 in Peru, 67 in Indy. So city's running a little bit warmer than the outlying areas by a couple degrees. But everybody very comfortable this morning with the low humidity that is in place all across the area. The skies are clear, beautiful shot from IMS looking back towards downtown Indianapolis. I was obviously sleeping, but my social media told me a lot of you did look at the International Space Station flyover uh, last night. So I'm glad we had great weather uh, for that. And we're going to have nice weather here going forward as the skies remain clear. We'll just build in some fair weather clouds later on today. Uh, but you do see some clouds and some rain off to our west. Eventually that is going to get here once we get into the evening hours tomorrow. And that's when the changes start to occur. So until then, 
10. Enjoy today. 81 by the noon hour, 87, so a couple degrees warmer than yesterday, but just as sunny and the humidity about the same as yesterday. So the only thing that's changed over the last 24 hours is the high temperatures just going up a couple degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you. Let's take a look right now at traffic. This is north of the downtown area, I-65 and 21st Street. You can see traffic in this area is quiet this morning. No crashes nor delays to slow you down for your commute. We'll continue to keep our eyes on your roads throughout your Tuesday and keep you updated. We are following some breaking news though this morning. The Supreme Court ruling overnight that federal executions can resume. Daniel Lewis Lee had been scheduled to be executed at 4 o'clock Monday afternoon out in Terre Haute. It was blocked by a district judge who said there are legal issues to solve surrounding the new sedative. Following the Supreme Court's late night ruling, Bureau of Prison officials rescheduled Lee's execution for this morning. Lee's lawyers argue that the execution cannot go forward after midnight under federal regulations. This morning, Indiana State Police are investigating another interstate shooting. Crews were called out to I-465 near mile marker 5 that's down on the south side just after 6 o'clock last night. They believe that a man was shot and killed in a road rage incident. The suspect's vehicle is described as a newer model black Chevrolet. Chevrolet, Impala, or Malibu. Police say the victim in this case is from Georgia. And last night's shooting was the second interstate shooting in the Indianapolis area in just two days. On Sunday, a man was critically injured after being shot on I-465 southbound and Shadlin Avenue. That was near mile marker 43 on the east side. Detectives believe that more than one shot was fired. This is a look at the damage to the victim's truck. An adult female and a three-year-old child were also in the truck, but they were not hurt. Police say they do not believe these two shootings are related. They are asking anyone who may have seen something in either of those incidents to please Please contact Crime Stoppers. That number is 317-262-TIPS. There are just a few weeks of summer left for most of central Indiana's students. So instead of the usual items, hand sanitizer and face masks, they are at the top of school supply lists. Districts are keeping a close eye on the continued spread of COVID-19, but most are moving ahead with the plans for in-person classes. Last night, Indianapolis Public Schools hosted a town hall to answer questions about its reopening plan. Many parents want to know if they choose in-person learning now, can they change their mind later in the year? We are asking families to commit for the quarter in the K-8 space, the semester at the high school space. And the reason for that um, is from an instructional standpoint and an academic standpoint, if you are making that transition, particularly in the high school space for credits that those students are working to earn, uh, it, it, it can be difficult to make a, a switch from the learning platform that they would be on in the virtual environment to the classroom. IPS announced its safety plan last week. It includes social distancing and mask requirements for students and staff. The deadline to opt in to opt of to opt out of in-person learning rather is this Friday. Classes are scheduled to start on August 3rd. We have more information on our website, theindychannel.com. Meanwhile, Perry Township's Board of Education approved the district's reopening plan last night. The semester will start as planned July 29th in person and e-learning options are also available to students. Face coverings must be worn by staff and students in designated areas when social distancing is not possible. Masks will be provided to any school member that needs one. Students enrolled in e-learning and they will be able to participate in the extracurricular activities at their school. Schools will be sending out their individual building plans to families this week. We are continuing to monitor each of Marion County School District's reopening plans and of course we'll update you with the latest both on air and online just as soon as we learn more. We do want to turn now to the latest information from the State Department of Health on the coronavirus outbreak here in Indiana. On Monday, two additional COVID-19 deaths were reported, bringing the total number of Hoosier deaths to 2,569. 452 new positive tests were also reported. More than 52,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for the virus so far. 570,409 people have been tested for COVID-19 in our state. About 9% of those tests are coming back positive. Taking a look now at how our state's hospitals are prepared for the pandemic. Health officials say more than 37% of Indiana's ICU beds are still available. COVID-19 patients are using about 11% of those. Non-COVID-19 patients are using more than 51% of the ICU beds. And 83% of the state's ventilators are still available.
Meals on Wheels needs help here in Hamilton County. The organization says requests in the area have increased by 48% from March to May, and the need continues to rise. There's enough food to go around, but not enough drivers. That's why they are asking for volunteers. Those deliveries are contactless, and officials say the standard route takes less than an hour of your time. For more information on how you can help, go to MealsOnWheelsHC.org, or you can call 317-776-7159. It is 437. Attorneys for two people accused of racially motivated threats near Lake Monroe say their clients are the victims of a smear campaign. Vox Booker has spoken out several times, saying the men in the video pinned him down and threatened to lynch him. There are multiple recordings that show part of what happened. In the videos, you can hear inappropriate language, including a racial slur from others who were with Sean Purdy and Carolyn McCord. But Purdy's attorney says that does not tell the whole story and claims that Booker instigated this confrontation. If you go on a neighbor's property and you start punching people, you can be restrained. And he ended up against the tree. No talk of a noose, no talk of a rope, no talk of a lynching, no white power. And you don't have all the video, okay? Mr. Booker says that he survived this near lynching, yet he stays to videotape people as he race baits them. Whitey. And then he gets one of them to say some racially insensitive stuff. Purdy and McCord have been interviewed by the FBI. The Department of Natural Resources is also investigating. RTV6 reached out to Vox Booker for a response. We'll let you know when we get an update. It is 4.38 new this morning. A Black Lives Matter street mural will be pointed here in the downtown area. City County Council adopted this special resolution approving that plan last night. The mural will be painted on Indiana Avenue between its intersection with West Street and its intersection with Paca Street. Councilors say they want to convey a message condemning racism and inequality. The Indiana Avenue Cultural District once stood as a center for the arts and home ownership for African Americans who were once segregated from other parts of the city. A street mural and block party are being planned for August 1st between 10 a.m and 4 p.m. The spike in coronavirus cases across the country triggering a new wave of shutdowns in certain hotspots. Just after the break, we're taking a look at the sweeping new restrictions in places like California and New York. And whiskey is often aged in wooden barrels, but now one company is taking the step further to serve it in bottles that are also made from wood. Coming up, how the makers of Johnny Walker are making history with this new packaging. Todd. All right, Lauren, a beautiful start to our Tuesday across the area. Temperatures in the 60s in many locations. Some of you, though, in the 50s with light winds. The humidity is nice and low here this morning. And as you look off to the city, a beautiful shot of the skyline. Start of what's going to be a very nice day for us. We'll talk about not only today's nice weather, but also the changes that are going to start to occur by tomorrow evening. All that's coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on RTV6. Welcome back. It is 442 on your Tuesday. Here's a live look in the downtown area at traffic. I-70 here at the North Split where everything's moving along up to speed. No crashes right now on your roads to slow you down. But of course, we'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. We'll let you know if you need to reroute it all as you're heading to work. We can now apply for programs created for Indiana residents who need some help making rent due to the pandemic. A statewide rental assistance program will provide up to $500 in assistance for four months. To be eligible, you must have lost your job or part of your income due to COVID-19. Your current household income, including unemployment, must be less than your household income on March 6th. And you cannot have received rental assistance in another, from another source. For more information, you can go to indianahousingnow.org. Marion County renters can get help through a different program that offers up to three months of rent payments. You must provide income information from February and income or unemployment information since March 1st. In both programs, landlords must agree to participate. Marion County residents can apply at IndyRent.org. If you received a COVID stimulus check for someone who died, don't worry about returning it. The IRS is now saying those checks have been canceled. In its rush to get the checks to 160 million eligible taxpayers quickly, the Treasury Department relied on previous tax filings. Well, some people had died between their last filing and when the checks were sent. Many taxpayers also received the one-time payment through direct deposit. Lawmakers are currently considering another payment as the pandemic continues. 
Well, the coronavirus cases are on the rise in at least 39 states, and the nationwide death toll has surpassed 135,000. A spike in new cases triggering a new round of shutdowns across the country as the World Health Organization warns that, quote, if basics aren't followed, it's going to get worse and worse. ABC's Inez de la Catera is in Washington now with more. This morning, California slamming its reopening plans into reverse. Virus is not going away anytime soon. As COVID-19 sends a record number of patients into California hospitals, the governor shutting down all indoor business across the state, restaurants, bars, theaters, and museums. One out of every 100 American has tested positive for the virus. New York's governor now issuing an emergency health order requiring travelers from states impacted by spikes of the virus to quarantine. If you leave the airport without filling out uh, the information, not only can you have a $2,000 fine, you can then be brought to a hearing and ordered to complete mandatory quarantine. Florida setting daily records and hospitals running out of space. That state's governor reluctant to reimpose restrictions, now heckled by a protester during his daily press briefing. Shame on you. You are an embarrassment. The World Health Organization warning. If the basics aren't followed, there is only one way this pandemic is going to go. It's going to get worse. Meanwhile, the nation's top infectious disease expert on Monday warning. We haven't even begun to see the end of it yet. But also striking an optimistic tone as he predicted researchers could find successful treatment for the illness by the fall and a vaccine by the end of the year. So we're pretty cautiously optimistic that at the end of the year, beginning of this coming 2021, we will have one and maybe more, I hope more than one vaccine, that would be available. And as the debate over when and how to reopen schools continues, LA School District, the second largest in the country, announcing they'll only reopen online in the fall. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. The time right now is 446. The Chicago Marathon has been canceled due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. Event organizers announced that decision on Monday. It's just the latest major race to be canceled. The Boston Marathon was scheduled for April 20th, and then it was put off until September before being canceled. The New York City Marathon was scheduled for November 1st. That's also been canceled. Runners registered for the Chicago race will have the option to receive a refund, or they can defer their place and entry fee to the future marathon of 2021, 2021. 22 or 2023. Marathon organizers say that they're working on a virtual experience and they'll release more information at a later date. This morning, we're still waiting to learn what the new name of the Washington Redskins will be. On Monday, the team announced it was changing its name and logo after mounting pressure from sponsors, corporate partners, and activists. The Navajo Nation released a statement saying, in part, quote, we strongly encourage the NFL Washington organization to rename their team in such a way that truly honors and respects the first American of this country, end quote. But not everyone is happy about the change. Walter Blackie Wetzel, a member of the Blackfeet tribe, designed the logo back in 1971. In response to this announcement, his son said that while everyone understands the name change, the logo was not offensive, but rather evokes a sense of pride. Time now for a check of our forecast. And Todd, we're going to see some rain on this Tuesday. Uh, nothing today in the forecast. That's the good news, Lauren. But as we progress throughout the week, the rain chances are going to start to come up. As you see uh, here, I have tomorrow a slight chance, and that's because tomorrow is a mainly dry day. It's not until late in the day uh, that the rain chances will arrive, but then they'll start to continue to ramp up as we go into uh, Thursday and Friday, and then even into uh, the weekend as we build back in uh, the heat and humidity. But this morning, it's really, really comfortable out there. Once again, 59 in Peru, 60 60 in Greenfield, 62 in Bloomington and Bedford, 64 is the current temperature in Greencastle. The humidity is nice and low this morning, and so it's going to be a great start to our day. And the humidity stays low throughout the entire day today. And you notice nothing but sunshine in the forecast, 80 degrees by the noon hour, 87 is by the time we get to the 5 p.m. hour uh, will be your high temperature for the day today. I wouldn't be shocked if some uh, areas get close to 90 degrees uh, later on uh, this afternoon. Uh, but again, 
again, the humidity is pretty comfortable for all of us throughout the day today as those dew points stay generally right around 60 degrees. And to kind of compare things, that's exactly where we were yesterday. So if you thought yesterday was pretty comfortable, you'll like today's forecast as well. The only difference is the actual high temperature is going to be a couple degrees warmer later on today than it was uh, for your Monday. Satellite radar picture shows the clear skies. It should be a beautiful sunrise once that starts to take place a little uh, before 6.30 here this morning. But the clouds off to our west, and then there's a few showers and storms off to the west as well. And that's the weather that will be heading in our direction throughout the day tomorrow and then eventually into uh, the course of early Thursday morning. So temperatures this evening will fall back down into the 70s once the sun sets. Tomorrow up to right around 90 degrees, the clouds will increase throughout the day. And based upon the timing of this front coming in, we'll probably avoid most of the severe weather that will be possible tomorrow off to our west. Uh, but by the evening hours, we could be bringing a few showers into the forecast, and then we're going to keep the showers and storms in the forecast heading into Thursday. The computer model is not showing a ton of rain overnight Thursday uh, or Wednesday into Thursday, but I do think there will be some showers and storms around. More showers and storms in the forecast for Thursday, Friday, and then as the heat really builds in Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, the heat index values will be over 100, Lauren, and then we get back into those spotty downpours that will be around each one of those days. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look right now at your commute at this hour. This is in the downtown area, I-65 here, view near Fletcher Avenue between the north and south splits. Traffic is traveling up to speed, both northbound and southbound, but you see all the orange barrels out there on the roads. Keep in mind, as you head into the south split, you will not be able to take I-70 westbound. Those lanes heading over to the west side are remaining closed. All the westbound lanes of I-70 between the south split and the west side over at 465 near the airport. Those are closed till July 28th. Of course, we'll keep you updated on that long term project. You can take I-65 South to I-465 as your detour. New York's Supreme Court has cleared President Donald Trump's niece to promote her tell all book titled, quote, Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man, end quote. Mary Trump's book comes out today and it's already at the top of Amazon's bestseller list. Her uncle, Robert Trump, who is President Trump's brother, previously filed a motion to block it, saying it violated a confidential agreement. The court dismissed that motion, but a temporary restraining order remained, keeping her from promoting it. The order is now lifted, paving the way for her to freely discuss and promote the book. After nearly 25 years of a production hiatus, the Bronco is back. Ford unveiled the new line last night, and there are three versions, a two-door mid-sized version of the off-road SUV, a four-door version, and a smaller off-roader called the Bronco Sport. Sport should be available by the end of the year, and the large Larger versions will be available early next year. No word yet on how much they will cost. So whiskey is usually aged in wooden barrels, and now Johnny Walker is serving up its scotch in bottles also made from wood. The brand's parent company, Diageo, says the new bottle made of wood pulp will be released in 2021. It's 100% plastic free, and it's expected to be fully recyclable. The move is an effort to increase sustainability. Other companies are also joining in, including Unilever and PepsiCo. Both are expected to launch their own branded paper bottles next year. Pretty interesting. Talk about a guitar hero coming up. How one man is bringing joy to the streets of Atlanta with his unique skills and talents. That story is coming up just after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. A guitar playing skateboarder is bringing smiles to Atlanta as it deals with the coronavirus pandemic and the ongoing racial equality protests. Meet Chavez Flag. The 24 year old skates up and down the city's popular Beltline Trail on his one wheel electric skateboard. He plays everything from Prince and Jimi Hendrix to Pop Smoke. Videos of Flag have circulated around TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, gaining him millions of views and plenty of tips. That's pretty cool. All right, Todd, if people are heading out on the trail, Trails today, a pretty good day to do that. Yeah, they were busy yesterday. I was out on uh, the Monon yesterday for a while, and today they'll be just as busy. A little warmer today with a high temperature of 87 degrees, but the humidity is still low and plenty of sunshine throughout the entire day. Tomorrow, 91 storms late in the day. Most of Wednesday's dry, and then scattered storms Thursday and Friday, followed by another round of heat and humidity as we head into the weekend. The time now is 4.57. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes.